You know that feeling of anticipation of a previous successful event only for it to turn downhill this year? You were preparing for this premium event. Like those late night con crunching, making gifts for your favorite guests, meeting friends whom you've been dying to see, planning your booth, and etc. All of these just for your hopes and dreams to be flushed down the cesspool of those who did not plan well enough. This is Conquest 2023. Here it goes based on my encounters for the three days that I attended. Day 1 was the bomb. I went as Kara from Undertale finally after so long of planning for this cosplay that I get to unleash my inner Undertale fan since 2016. We arrived around 9.30am in the hotel and I got changed to my Kara cosplay immediately. Then we were off to SMX. My brother and I went in first via the entrance on the NU or National University side. Good thing we went by the side entrance because the line outside of the main entrance was like approximately two snake lines long. But anyways, we're here and the first thing that we did was check out the main stage because I wanted to see the 10.30am segment of the roomies. They started late actually because at that time the DLC pep squad was still performing their cheers so we moved on and explored the area. The first floor is where most of the sponsor and esports related boots are. So these are like Riot, Logitech, Tier 1, etc. But I was surprised that there was this lone artist booth in the middle of the big ones. Like, aren't they supposed to be upstairs where all of the artists are? Like, that is very weird and lonesome. So anyways, I needed to move to Conrad because I have a 11am meet and greet with Koi Dao, the VA of Albedo from Genshin Impact, and Laura Stahl, the VA of Barbara and Shinya from Genshin Impact as well. My brother went along so he could attend the panel of Anyatko, Ratana, and Kori Yi, which is also happening at the same time. But upon going to Conrad, we actually got lost because the entrance that I'm familiar with is the entrance near the SMX bridge. We were told to go to the north entrance at the first floor. There were no other signs that told you this way, so like we were going around Esmason asking where the entrance was for a while. Also, the map that they provided going to Conrad wasn't really helpful. We eventually found it, but oh my god, the sun was directly roasting us. And then when we got closer to have our bags and tickets inspected, the staff said no water bottles, food, and big bags were allowed. This wasn't even publicized in any of Conquest socials, plus there was no big ass sign that tells us to not bring those stuff on the day. Not to mention, there was only one line checking the bags, like where is the separate line for premium pass holders? Because I paid for this, y'all. After the inspection outside, I got to immediately pass by the stop claiming and went inside Conrad. But at first, you will have to do an airport security check, then climb up a few long escalators. The aircon inside was so cold that you could get sick from the sudden change in temperatures. So inside the main hall, there were three rooms, two for the meet and greets, one big and one small, and one long room for the panels. I suddenly got giddy when I finally entered the room for Koi and Laura and was on the first row of the line. Then Koi and Laura appeared and they were just the cutest. And I realized how tall what? Koi was. Like they were both really friendly and just chill. The first few people in front of me were able to have a long chat with Koi and Laura. But I noticed I did not see any official photographer in front so I don't really know if there will be any official photos. Anyways, it was my turn. I honestly don't know what to say, but I was just happy saying hi, taking a photo with them. All in all, the whole thing went by like 10 minutes for me, including the line. Then I decided to go to Anne, Ratna, and Corey's panel, the one where my brother was supposed to go. I'm so glad I got to see Anne and Ratna again from last year. Like, what a wonderful feeling. Not long after that, I went back to SMX to eat lunch and watch Joe Wayne and Aki's main stage segment, the anime luncheon. I finally saw the both of them in real life. Too bad Garnt and Connor weren't there to complete the trash taste. They were talking about anime Japan stuff and played anime trivia with Goku, which had a bunch of questions regarding very old anime. Next is my meet and greet with Kori Yi, the voice actor of Goro, and Sean Chiplock, the voice actor of Diluc. Let me tell you how I can't believe how chaotic the both of them were, and I was so shocked with Sean the most for having such a voice that resonated the whole room. Contract said something about making out for 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to chat a bit with them, but sad I didn't get a selfie because the staff said the official photographer will be photographing instead. I finally got time to round around the second floor of SMX for the first time and wow, it was massive. I just find it weird that the shelled big shops are beside the artist's table. Also, I find it awkward that the resting place is in the middle like it would have been better if it was in the corner so there could be a chance for photographers to set up. But the good part with the layout from last year is that there are spaces for lines in the guest booths so that's an improvement. 
The only thing I did there was meet and greet Ratana and get her signed print finally. I was so excited that I forgot to take a photo with her. Anyways, I didn't have time to line up for Anne, so I decided to attend Koi and Laura's panel. I could really say that I love how Laura answers questions, like she's just so sweet. And then there's Koi nonchalantly being Koi. This is our only opportunity to see how our work impacts people. And every single time, it is... Yeah, it's, it's delightful, it's mind-boggling. After their inspiring panel, it was time for me to take my cosplay photos and unleash my riz. I also got news from my brother that he didn't get free meet and greet passes for Joey and Aoki because there was like a stampede or jumbling of lines that happened. Like there was a line and then suddenly there were no lines. And he said that there were others who lined up for two hours only to be disappointed in the end. I proceeded to line up for Pokemon and Michael Reeves meet and greet. I underestimated the amount of people lining up for them. The premium line was so long, like, I felt that everyone just bought the premium pass just for this moment. I love how Poki is just the sweetest queen of all and Michael is just so chill. I didn't get the chance to have a small chat with Michael because the staff were just next, 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 which was really annoying, but I'm happy nonetheless. Hello. We are tired. 6 p.m. Compost 23. Yes, we have cars. We have food, IKEA. This is a nice addition. There is space, pero ang init init ayoko na. Not long after that, a Jollibee staff was handing out free Jollibee for everyone. Kuya! Kuya! Oh, free Jollibee! This was on Pokimane as she mentioned on Twitter because look at her cute small art print inside. Oh, let's go! Free Jollibee, let's go! Thank you very much, Pokimane. The night is still not over since we still have the free Friday music night, which I'm honestly stoked for. However, it went downhill when the SMX security weren't letting people in the main stage, so like, what's the point of it being free when not everyone can go in? Like, what is this rule? They could have just closed off the second floor and just let people in the main stage, like, that's what we came here for. So what we did, I first took a look on my own to see if it's good. And let me tell you, the tunes were the bomb and I loved it. But the venue wasn't full, which kind of made me sad. I let my brother take a peek next and I know for a fact that dude isn't into partying, but he loved the tunes as well. They were playing anime and Vocaloid songs like, bro, I wanna be there too. Sadly, only premium pass holders could go in if you came from outside. It's such a bummer really, I really really want to be inside. But I just let my bro enjoy the night because I'll be going to tomorrow's music night instead. Day 1 was over and I really hope tomorrow will be even better. Day 2 is where the actual magic happens. I decided not to cosplay after getting a taste of my routine yesterday. Kind of a waste since I slightly rushed my costume the day before, but oh well. We went in via the NU entrance again so it was smooth and we did not line up. And my goal that morning was to get signed prints and roam around the booths before my first meet and greet at 1pm. Lined up for Sean Chiplock and I also learned that he's into luxuries which I thought was cute especially when he flexed his luxury socks. I lined up to Corey's booth the next and man, he was so chill and approachable and I really appreciate his vibes. Since Koi and Laura weren't in their booths yet, I decided to have a look around the shops again. I found the Avatar Cabbage cosplayer and they were selling produce to support our farmers. Fast forward, I got in smoothly in Conrad again but the line system didn't really improve from yesterday so there was nothing new, we were still being roasted by the sun and there are no proper categories for lines for panels and meet and greets. There are still no priority lanes for premium holders. Anyways, I finally got to meet Dish. She's so pretty in real life and she's like, her glow was definitely blinding that day. I suddenly wondered if they were finally accepting signing today because it will be a waste if it's not. And before going back to the hotel, there was still a massive line in front of SMX which looks like it will take 3 hours to get inside. And it really got worse from yesterday even. This made me realize that I couldn't just get inside, so probably the best course of action right now is to just keep attending the meet and greets until sundown. For my next meet, I got in time for Anthony Chen. 
Ant is so tall. I wish I had his jeans. I tried going back to SMX, but the lines were still long. Even the side entrances. Since I know the way around SMX, I entered from the any side and worked my way up by using the side escalators instead of the main ones. But even though I slightly managed to bypass the first floor lines, I still need to line up to enter the second floor function rooms. Obviously, I gave up because I don't have patience, so I went down to the first floor and rested in this area as much as I could. By 4.15pm, I already lined up for Jamie and Lily Peach's meet because I thought it was going to start at 4.30pm. The guards were even telling us that the line we made was not the official line, so they asked us to disperse. I didn't really know what to do, so I just entered back as Mason and waited until it was finally time. Honestly, they could have arranged the line even if it were really early because we chose to suffer early and we couldn't really enter SMX anyways. By the time of Jamie and Lily's meet, I find it so interesting that this is a meet for the people with cute voices. I had a great short time of meeting them and I hope to see more of their stuff soon, especially Lily's music and Jamie's clothing line. I tried getting in Scamily's meet and greet too, but sadly they don't allow any more premium holders. So there goes another of my premium experiences to the void. So since it was around 6pm already and thankfully the lines were no more, I didn't really have any more energy to browse stuff. And to summarize music night, the band lined up was perfect. My favorite performances were definitely from Autotelic, Timmy Albert, Lesha, and surprisingly James Reed. Like he's actually a good performer. Like he knows how to pump up a crowd. And of course, the lovely The Rose. The Rose were definitely great performers as well as their music and was sweet to the bone. Everyone shined in my eyes. After the performance, we got to do a very quick short meet and greet. I would have asked the boys their skincare routine because they are so smooth. We're finally down to the last day and I really hope there could at least be some improvements with the con. First things first is to leave our hotel then line up to get my brother's last chance to get a meet and greet with Joey. But as we were about to enter from the NU side as usual, we were stopped by the guard who told us to line up outside by the main gate. I was a bit disappointed because that means you have no choice but to roast yourself under the sun and we weren't wrong when we saw this line. We thereby declared that we will not be lining up and getting in SMX today. So we will just attend all of the panels and meet and greets in Conrad and that's just probably it. Before the mall opened, we were already lining up by the entrance where the meet and greet stuffs were said to be, which is in the atrium. And while we were waiting, we were greeted by a WWE cosplayer and agreed. Acknowledge me. The whole con has been a cesspool of bad experiences. When the mall finally opened, all of the attendees ran to the atrium but sadly, they were all out even before the set schedule last I checked. This is utterly chaotic and frustrating. I actually had a plan B for my brother to let him borrow my premium pass so he could meet Joey at least. And we proceeded to Conrad for my meet and greet with Volcray, Fuzli, and Sai Kuno. <laughs> Even while waiting, the three of them were so fun to watch, I didn't even mind the line. I can't help but comment how tall Saikuno is in real life. Ray was just a contagious bubble of sunshine and then there's Leslie with the happiest face ever. I still had a bit of time so I attended the panel next door and when I reunited with my brother, he flexed to me all of the panel stubs he got for the whole day so he didn't have to line up again. Then as we exit Conrad, we took a peek at SMX below and crap look at that line, it reached the back of the building so it really got worse from yesterday. So yeah, we're not gonna go inside SMX and just be at Conrad today. I had my next meet and greet session with Tuanto and Bao, like finally. Jake even gave us a mini piano concert, like oh, the feels bro. Then I finally got to meet them up close and Bao was just so adorable. Then when I went to Jake, I was so brain fogged that time that when I asked him my question, I jumbled up my words that I kind of felt bad for him and the other person before me because I couldn't say it properly. The question was, if he had any interest in composing for a game, what game would it be? But lol, he just looked confused at me so anyways, happy to have met both of them. The meet ended so early so my brother and I just ate lunch and chilled by the director's club. And this is my new rest area in MOA. 
A little later, we planned to go to Scamily's panel, but the sad part was I suddenly couldn't enter because I didn't have a meet and greet stub. I've been attending panels with no problem for the past two days and a half, and now suddenly you're not letting me in because of a miscommunication from your team? What the heck? The least that they could have done is just let us stand instead because this was our benefit and it wasn't even mentioned in the website or any socials that even the premium holders need to have the meet and greet stubs. By the way, the stubs were sold out around 1pm so there's really nothing left for us. If I were to even criticize, they didn't even have the big projector have the faces of the guests so like the people at the back wouldn't even see it. So yeah, there was really no choice but to go back to the director's club and wait. No way am I going to waste my time running up outside SMX plus I have no energy to walk to MOA as well to watch the roomies panel. I just waited until it was time to go back to Conrad for my last meet and greet of the whole event. I had prompted my brother of what he needed to do so he would be prepared to take my pass later. During Joey and Aki's meet, I was the lucky fan who snagged the last piece of Joey's print. And anyways, I got the both of them to sign the print. Also, I think I was kind of awkward because when I asked Aki how she felt about being back in the Philippines, she ignored me while she was signing the print. It's fine though, she must be overwhelmed already or like my voice was very low. Now for the moment of truth, I passed my premium pass to my brother and waited for him to finally meet Joey up close. It was a success and I think the staff were already too tired to even check him closely. But the important part is he got to meet the both of them and I'm so proud of this min-maxing strategy. I took my pass back and decided to go to Atsu and BTMC's meet and greet then attended the last panel of the day. My brother gave to me the panel stub out of pity because I am the fan here. If there's one thing I learned from that panel is that Koi is a self-proclaimed edgy Evil Asian Kagari. boy. I'm glad that I got to experience this one last moment with them. While exiting Conrad, Pokey, Jamie, Lily, and Michael passed by me one last time. When I reunited with my brother, I was surprised he was able to refund his day 3 ticket because he didn't even enter the venue anyways. It was also disappointing again that security wasn't letting anyone in SMX except premium pass holders. So much for the announcement that morning, there are lies after lies that I just couldn't believe it. And since I'm the only one who can enter, I decided to buy what my brother might have missed buying and get the prints from the guest boots. But sadly, only Koi was available that time. And that was Konkyu, Refund Quest, Line Quest, whatever you want to call it. It was a guest-heavy event and I'm glad I was able to take advantage of my pass. Although, I would have appreciated it more if the premium pass holders have their own priority line like last year. Now for a very short review of the convention, it really went downhill so fast when day 2 arrived. During day 1, everyone was praising the con even with the mishaps of the lines. I think the organizers really underestimated their vision and the consequences of their planning and coordination. I don't want to mention one by one the catastrophe that happened but for future organizers, I hope these suggestions that I read and gathered from the internet could be read. Number 1. Don't oversell. This is the most obvious and the reason why Conquest was a mess. The main venue experience over capacity, plus I think the organizers were hoping that the attendees would spread out to all the other venues, but that kind of failed. The overall flow and structure of each venue is just not optimized for holding a multiple venue event. If the Philippines had a better convention building like that of Singapore, then probably people would disperse more. Number 2. Ticket selling should have just stayed online and meet and greets should have just been paid. The online ticketing system this year was actually smooth. They should have just stuck to that and not sell on site when they know the capacity has exceeded on the day of the convention. And it should have stayed a paid meet and greet like last year, even if it means experiencing crashes because at least the organizers could break even with their guest fees and the number of people are more controlled. Plus, there's no need to line up during the con. Imagine lining up for two hours for a chance to get a meet and greet stop only to not get one. That two hours could have been used to shop at the quest market. But if the organizers wanted to give everyone a chance by giving it for free, then at least have everything done online. Because what's the point of this raffle draw if everyone is just gonna have a hassle on the day of the convention? Number 3. Have proper communication and dissemination of responsibilities for the staff. Plus, train the staff. 
This was absolutely the most frustrating part because the Conquest staff, volunteers, and SMX security were not on the same page. The security and staff were raising their voices and some were being rude to the attendees. They also don't have an effective means to communicate. So if ever in the future, please invest in communication equipment like walkie-talkies or earpieces. Number 4. Be consistent with the schedules and publications I know there are instances where schedules aren't followed because preparation can take so much time, but please be kind enough to offer refreshments. I saw that the meet and greets panel and stage segments were followed properly even with the short delay, so that's okay. But again, if schedules involve inconveniencing the time of the attendees, then be prepared. Also, please be considerate when extending hours. Most people who work in the quest market are definitely going to be tired, but to really avoid avoid these kinds of scenarios, listen to the suggestions and comments of the sellers, artists, the market that would make both parties agree. Like treat everyone with respect. I'm pretty sure there are many more details to mention but overall, I think those are the main things that could have made the overall experience a bit better. Would I still go to Conquest next year if ever there was another one? I would say yes. If they only hold this event once every year, they have more time to learn from their mistakes and prepare better. If I recall, this is their 7th conquest and it just so happened that 1 out of 7 gave us the worst experience ever. I hope not just the organizers but to everyone who aspires to organize an event to always think everything thoroughly. From the budget, venue, staff, and many more. I know it's not an easy job but I do appreciate that we have these kinds of events happen more frequently. Imagine back in the old days, these kinds of events are scars, so I'm really thankful to those who step up and make things happen. To all attendees, please stay safe and healthy and always look after yourselves. The money you paid for the event may or may not return but don't risk yourself if you see that it's not worth the trouble. Thank you all for reaching this far and see you in the next video!